Hi, I'm Keith Tebow, Director of FRC Media. I want to thank you all for your continued support of the work we do here at FRC Media in providing local content to you, the cable subscribers in Fall River. You know, we look at cable television and we look at it as an opportunity for us to get information and to get entertainment. But actually, there's a role that the city of Fall River has to play in terms of the licensing of a cable company, in the case of Fall River Comcast, to do business within the city of Fall River. The city of Fall River will be working on a new franchise with Comcast in the coming year, year and a half. But we're actually working to get your input on what you'd like to see in terms of cable television service and communication services in the city of Fall River. And we're going to be conducting some work over the next few months that really we really need your help on. And joining me today is Sue Buskey. She is the president of the Buskey Group. And she's going to be helping us gain this data so we can better serve the community better through cable television. Sue, thank you for joining me. I appreciate I'm it. I'm very pleased to be here. Let's talk a little bit about briefly the cable licensing process. Mm -hmm. what, what, is re what is the responsibility of a city, what it can ask for, and what can the residents expect through this process? Well, number one, the reason there's a franchise or a license agreement in the first place is because the cable operator, in this case Comcast, is using the public's property to put their wires, whether it's on the poles or if it's underground utilities. In order to do that, they have to get permission of the city, which is responsible for that property. So what a franchise really is, is a sophisticated lease agreement. Mm -hmm. The cable company is a tenant on the public's property. And part of that relationship is they can't go and dig in the street without permission, right. but also they have to provide some kind of community benefits or rent, so to speak, for the use of the right-of-way. So that's the basic premise. That's why there has to be franchises in the first place. And, and there's a process under federal and state law that cities have to go through when, that, when it comes time for those franchise or licenses to be renewed, which is only once every 10 years. And as we know, with changes in technology, 10 years is a long time. Absolutely. And think about it. The current one is going to expire in November of 2019. 2019 next year, okay. yeah. Well, the one that comes after that is going to go till 2029. Now, just think about, if you think about how much technology has changed between now and 10 years ago, which would have been 2009, think about that next 10 year spread. So when we do franchise renewal, we need to look at what the communication needs are for the community, not just today, but 10 years from now. As cable subscribers, we tend to complain about a couple of things. We tend to complain about the cost of the service, and not only the, now the cable television service, but also potentially phone service and internet service. Mm -hmm. And we also complain in terms of cable television about channel offerings. Why do I have to pay for sports if I'm not a sports fan? Unfortunately, throughout this process, the city has no say in those issues, correct? That's correct. Actually, rates are deregulated at the federal level. And also, the choice that the cable operator gives you as far as channel lineup, that also local governments cannot tell the cable company what channels to provide or which ones they can't provide. The right. one arena where the city does have authority on that is around our community channels or our public education and government like channels. Like us. Like you guys, and like Fred TV, and like the government channel. Right. Exactly. So, what can the city do as it prepares toward negotiating a new license with Comcast? What are some of the things that they can control other than you know, our stations and also the funding that goes around that? Mm -hmm. what, else, what else can a city do? Well, for instance, things like um, where the cable operator is required to provide service. Um, I learned today that not everybody in Fall River can even get cable. Right. Or if they want cable, they have to pay a whole bunch of money to get it the undergrounded or whatever. Right. Well, that's something you, kinda, you have control over. Right. Who gets service? Another area that you have control over is um, is, is making sure that the uh, customer service is quality. In other words, if a technician is supposed to come to your home to do something and they don't show up when they're, they're supposed to and you've just taken off work for the afternoon to be there when the technician comes, mm. uh, calling, how long you have to wait on hold. The whole customer service arena is another one of several where the city has some authority. And the city currently has a customer service center on Warren Street in Fall River, so that's also would be part of that exactly. process. Exactly. Yeah. Making in, sure that it's that's still it's around. Yeah, and some cities don't have right. a customer service center. Right. I mean, I was just working in one not far from here, and they don't have one at all. Or they had one, and then the company closed it. Okay. 
and people have to drive 25, 30 miles to exchange equipment. Now it's time for you to get involved with us once again. Um, I want to thank those of you who have, may have been part of the focus groups that we held here in the middle of May. And now, bet between now and the end of June, is an opportunity for all Fall River residents, whether you're a cable subscriber or not, to play an active role in gathering more data for us to work toward that cable franchise renewal. Sue and her uh, corporation is working on an online survey that any Fall River resident, cable subscriber or not, can take part in to get, again, gain more of that information so the city is ready for negotiations in 2019. So Sue, what does the online survey entail? Well, basically the online survey is going to ask questions about a number of things. And whether, as you mentioned, whether you're a subscriber or not a subscriber, right. we're going to have questions for you. Whether you've produced a program or appeared on a program at Fred TV or here at FRC Media, we're going to have questions for you. So you're going to be have the opportunity to say if you're a subscriber, or answer questions about the picture and sound quality of, okay. of, the, of Comcast, the customer service. Um, have they uh, when when they uh, when you call them up, uh, do they answer right away, or do you get put into voicemail and you never crawl out again for 20 minutes? Okay. Right. So all those sort of customer service things. We're also going to ask you about what if you take service. Do you take high definition or not? Uh, do you watch community programming and Fred TV and, and FRC Media or not? If you've watched it, how often do you watch it? What are your favorite programs? So the survey is really designed to get kind of two or three broad types of information. Number one, information about customer service. Number two, if you're not a customer, is there a reason why you choose not to be a customer? Mm -hmm. Number three, um, if you've produced programming, you've appeared on programming, we want to learn more about the community programming you watch, the local information on one of the three community channels, and also um, what you'd like to see in the future. Right. So the survey is going to run uh, between now and June 30th. Mm -hmm. And the, the way to access it will be through our, our website at, at uh, frmedia.org. The link will be on the screen there for you to, to access it. Um, and, you know, we want to hear from you. And as, as Sue said, there's uh, different opportunities based on your answers. Um, for some of you, the survey may be more lengthy than others, mm -hmm. but, for, for, but the most important thing is for you to get involved. Now, Sue, um, the focus groups which we just went through mm -hmm. combined with this survey, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how will this be packaged into material that will be helpful for the city as it negotiates? Well, basically what will result is a, uh, what we call a needs assessment report, and it'll have two volumes. One will be the main body of the report, and the other will be all the appendices, right. okay? The main body of the report will sort of document, here's what we learned about programming, about, um, about customer service. It'll have bar charts and pie charts. It'll, it'll basically also include information about the current community programming resources here at FRC Media and, and over at Fred TV, et cetera. Then it'll move into a section um, that has to do with key findings. So based on what we've learned about what people view, uh, how people find what they view, et cetera, what are the key findings? And then the third part of the report will say, okay, based on what the public said and based on the key parts of that, what should be in the new franchise? What should be the things that the city is negotiating for? So that's kind of how it flows. And then, again, that'll be a big part of the city's, uh, as you say, toolkit mm -hmm. for them to use when they start negotiating with Comcast probably sometime in, in 2019. But the key is to get involved. Um, if you are at all concerned with your community, not necessarily cable television in general, but your community, it's good to be engaged. And we hope that you will be engaged in taking part in our online community cable television survey, which will be available between now and June 30th. So please do so, follow the link on your screen, and we hope to see you very soon. Sue, thank you very much. Glad to be here.